So these are our ingredients for our crock pot gumbo. Three tablespoons of flour, three tablespoons of oil, one pound of smoked sausage, two cups of frozen okra, one large onion, one large green pepper, three cloves of garlic, one fourth teaspoon of ground cayenne pepper, one fourth teaspoon of pepper, one can of diced tomatoes, that's the 14.5 ounce, one 12 ounce pack of shelled, deveined, as I say tails off because they do sell it that way so you don't have to tell tails off of them, of, of shrimp. And this is how you get it started. You need your crock pot and you're going to need your little pan and we're going to get to it. All right, we're going to add our three tablespoons of oil to our saucepan. A little warm there. And we're going to keep it on medium and we're going to add our flour. And we're just going to whisk away. You got to keep stirring because you want it to turn to a golden orange. I said orange. For y'all that don't know what orange is, I meant orange. Sometimes it looks a little messy, but it will thin out. And while this is going, some people can dice up other stuff or whatever. I like to have all my stuff laid out, as you can see. And unlike other cooking shows who use the nice bowls and stuff like that, in the real world, we don't have time for all of that. So paper plates work really well so you can throw it in the trash can. No more washing dishes. And once that is to a golden orange, orange, as we say, we will be ready to go. Next step. Good. And now that our rouge is a brownish orange color, it usually takes about 10 minutes to get this color. Don't freak out because it's going to go through some color changes. Turn my stove off. You're going to take it and transfer it to your crock pot. used to get up early and put this on before she was haul butt to work. And after that, you just pour everything in it, but the shrimp. Shrimp go in last. And for all of y'all that no, because I didn't tell you that you can use cooked shrimp or uncut shrimp. When you don't have a lot of time, is you can buy some cooked shrimp and some cooked sausage and put it in here and it takes less time. And, but I like to make it complicated sometimes and use uncooked stuff because it soaks in the juices more because you got to cook it a little bit longer. You take your tomatoes. Ooh. I bought cheap plates. This is a cheap route to go, but you might want to spend a little bit more on the plastic ones because they don't spill. And you stir it all up. And you get your garlic. See, I ain't got time to be mincing no garlic, so you just buy the garlic in the jar and get three tablespoons. That's easy. All that mincing is too much work. You want to work smart, not hard. And now everything is in here. It don't look like much right now, but it's gonna simmer and cook for six hours. And you go to work and make your money and come back and your dinner is ready. You ain't gotta do nothing but serve it on a plate. So that's how we do it. We'll come back here a little bit and show you how to put the shrimp in. You only put the shrimp in the last 10 minutes to cook shrimp the last 10 minutes. If you use an uncooked shrimp, you can do it 30 minutes. And that's how we roll. All right, and it is now that time you have had your gumbo 
in the crock pot all day while you have been gone to work or wherever you have been gone. And right before you serve it, at least 10 minutes, you want to put your cooked shrimp in and stir it up. If you're using uncooked shrimp, you want to do 20 to 30 minutes. Stir it all in like that. And when I come back, I'll show you how to put it in your plate or however you want to put it on your plate, but I'll give you some suggestions on what you can do to make it look pretty and a cute way to make some cornbread that tastes homemade. And I was telling you guys about a quick and easy way to make some homemade, so well not homemade, it tastes like homemade. You're going to get you some cornbread mix, whatever your kind is, and you're going to mix it as it tells you to. And then you're going to get your cast iron skillet. If you don't have a cast iron skillet, you can use a regular baking pan. But what you're going to do is fill it up with oil, just a little bit to coat the bottom, and put it in your oven until it's nice and hot. Whatever temperature your cornbread asks you to use. I'm very fond of the jiffy cornbread. And you take it and you mix it. And it's going to come out really nice and crispy and moist. Put that back in the oven according to its instructions. And there you go. Right, and we are back. Our gumbo is done. And this doesn't normally happen in normal life where everything comes out at the same time. But our cornbread is done. We're going to flip it over. right now but you can't have a piece and then our pies came out and look how lovely and golden they look looks like it's very hard but it wasn't but you can lie and say it was you're gonna let them cool and you don't want to cut them until they're totally cool because they will fall apart and so what we're gonna do now See, it's all about presentation. Get you some cute little inexpensive bowls. Target, wherever. We usually do rice, but you know, we're trying to cut back on the starches. So we don't have that for that gumbo. We do the cornbread instead. Yes, I know in New Orleans they do both, but we're not in New Orleans. And you're trying to live a long time. So we cut out cornbread. Just so crispy. And wait till you taste it. Take our cornbread. I love you. And then we get our gumbo. And y'all need no garnishes and all that. You know how they make it look all pretty. You just take the gumbo and put your little bit over the cornbread all around it. So the cornbread is 
in the middle. It's like a surprise. Set it up. And there you go.